Hi everyone. So in the next several units, we are going to talk about functional groups that involve carbon and oxygen bonded together, um, which in many ways I think serves as uh, one of the, the sort of fundamental um, aspects of organic chemistry as a whole and certainly of the chemistry of life. So uh, what we're going to do in this unit is to talk about the chemistry of the functional group um, known as alcohols. And so now strictly speaking, uh, an alcohol is uh, a OH group, so an oxygen hydrogen bonded to an sp3 hybridized carbon, right? So I show a sort of a generic alcohol here. But we're also going to talk a little bit um, in this same unit about um, the chemistry of phenols, which we've um, encountered a little bit so far in our discussion of aromaticity. And uh, as a way to um, sort of think about these, um, you might consider their analogy to water, um, which of course you know is, is H2O. And so an alcohol, um, uh, structurally speaking, is water where you've replaced one of the hydrogens with an organic group, some carbon substituent. Now the uh, thing that we're not going to talk about in this unit um, are alkenal alcohols or what, what you might call vinyl alcohols. Um, these are known as enols and these actually have um, very unique properties in chemistry that we're going to talk about in a further unit. So as we always like to do, uh, start off with a few examples of where we see alcohols. Um, and I think, you know, the, the term alcohol is um, widespread enough that everyone has heard about this, um, even if uh, you don't know some of the specific properties. Um, but we could just quickly go through some examples of where we see alcohols um, uh, in, in molecules that we know about. So everyone knows ethanol, um, uh, obviously uh, used very much um, recreationally uh, by humans for many thousands of years. Um, and uh, so I, I think ethanol is uh, interesting because it's the only thing I can think of that you both put into your body and into your gas tank. Um, and I suppose that's fuel in both senses. Um, but of course, we, we know ethanol from uh, our, our drinks that we uh, use recreationally. Um, it's a very simple alcohol, just two carbons and a hydroxyl group. Um, an even simpler alcohol is methanol. So this is the simplest alcohol that you can get. Um, it uh, can be derived uh, from wood. Um, so it's oftentimes called wood alcohol. This is one of the most important industrial chemicals. Um, and of the many uses, one of them is actually that's used in uh, embalming fluid. Um, and this actually goes back even to the uh, ancient Egyptians. They used it in their mummification process. Another simple alcohol, this one with three carbons, is isopropanol, which you probably know best um, as its use or its common uh, description is rubbing alcohol. But we see alcohols in a lot of other contexts in much more complicated uh, situations. Um, so, for example, in the amino acids. Right? So here's those uh, 20 uh, common amino acids again. Um, and if we look at which ones have alcohol functionality, we can see that there's three. So uh, the technically the actual alcohol amino acids are serine and threonine. <clears throat> you can see how related they are in structure. And then we also have one phenol uh, amino acid, tyrosine, which we talked about in the aromaticity uh, section. There's actually one more amino acid that I'd like to bring up at this point um, because it, it, it is somewhat related, and that is cysteine. So cysteine is an example of a thiol, okay? So uh, a thiol is basically just the sulfur version of an alcohol. So sulfur is right below oxygen in the periodic table. And in certain respects, the chemistry of thiols um, is similar to alcohols, but it's also dramatically different as well. Um, and so we'll talk very briefly in one video about the chemistry of thiols, which actually turns out to be um, absolutely uh, crucial, plays a, a very unique role um, in biology. Well, we see alcohol functionality um, everywhere um, in, in nature, though, um, and it, it really is uh, nearly ubiquitous functionality. And so I could pick um, thousands, if not millions, of examples of naturally occurring molecules that have alcohol functionality. I just so shown three here that I think you probably recognize their names. Um, so these are all examples of steroids. And what makes them steroids is this four ring uh, fusion here that you see, it's a six, 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 five. You can see they all have that um, general carbon framework. And then they're decorated with various amounts of um, unsaturation or oxygenation, what have you. 
But you take that steroid nucleus and you uh, put certain functionality around there, you get to cholesterol. Right? So cholesterol is very important, of course, um, and that has a single hydroxyl group. So all of this carbon and hydrogen and then a single hydroxyl group. But that makes cholesterol an alcohol, okay? And that's why you, uh, it's even in the name, it has, has an all, and that usually indicates that it's an alcohol of some type. Another steroid is uh, testosterone. Uh, and so testosterone is uh, actually, the name is given the ketone. That's a ketone functionality. So that's sort of the overriding functionality that gave it its name. But you can see up here, it also has an alcohol functionality. So there, there's two different oxygenations in that structure. And then estrogen. Estrogen is very closely related, as you can probably see, to testosterone. Um, and in fact, uh, you might recognize that if you were to just make that enol tautomer of, of that ketone of testosterone and then do uh, basically you have to lose a methyl group um, and, and do that oxidation oxidation sorry uh, you get to estrogen which now has both a phenolic um, functionality and an alcohol functionality right. so uh, again these are just uh, three very simple examples of where we see this um, in human biology a lot of uh, alcohols are naturally occurring, um, and some of these uh, occur in molecules that um, have very distinctive smells. And so many of these are actually going to be used um, in perfumes or in food products. So, for example, menthol, which of course is responsible for both the mint smell and mint flavor. Um, and also, um, incidentally, uh, if you Put it on your skin or, or have it in your mouth it uh, is responsible for that cooling sensation so you can see menthol is a fairly simple molecule and it in fact has that um, alcohol functionality and so again that's why it's menthol that's the all uh, tells you that it's an alcohol other uh, alcohols will smell uh, very very wonderful um, and so terpineol again is a very simple um, naturally occurring alcohol uh, it has the smell of sort of like lilacs and it's oftentimes used um, as a perfuming agent and then geraniol is also used as a uh, for its a uh, pleasant smell and it uh, is described as having a rose-like scent okay again three very simple examples and there's many more that could be given and then finally uh, medicinal agents um, just as in in uh, biology uh, we see in medicines, which are often derived from naturally occurring molecules, that alcohol functionality is completely ubiquitous. Um, we find it uh, all over the place. And in fact, it's probably rarer to, to not have an alcohol than, than to have an alcohol. Um, maybe. I haven't done the statistics. But I just showed four examples here, uh, again, of I think of drug compounds that you probably have heard of. Um, so, so morphine, again, we've got a phenolic alcohol. Um, and a, and a uh, sorry a phenol and then an alcohol um, here we have quinine um, which uh, is useful for treating malaria um, there's a nice little alcohol functionality in addition to an amine and, and some aromaticity erythromycin is an antibiotic that uh, you might have heard of and this is a pretty complicated looking structure and you can go around and, and uh, pick out a number of different alcohol functionalities including on these sugar portions of the molecule. And then Taxol, which is one of the most important anti-cancer agents. Um, and again, you can see the just the um, uh, you know, large extent of oxygenation of this structure, um, including um, an alcohol functionality there and there, and then other ones which have uh, been derivatized. Um, so they, they're now uh, converted into esters. So that's chemistry that we'll get into um, in terms of functionalizing alcohols. But Again, four simple examples, many more could be given. And so before we move on to talk about the chemistry of alcohols, there's one small bit of terminology that I want to make sure that we're on the same page about. Um, and that has to do with describing the extent of substitution um, at the carbon that bears the hydroxyl group. So what we're going to describe these as is primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohols. So as you can see, primary, a primary alcohol has a single substituent coming off of that carbon uh, that bears the hydroxyl group. A secondary has two substituents, and then tertiary has three. Right? So these are um, a, a useful way of categorizing the type of alcohol we're dealing with, um, and a little bit of the properties in, in chemistry um, uh, 
differs between these three classes of alcohols. All right, so in the next video, we'll talk about some of the properties, the physical properties of alcohols.